Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today I have a very special reading vlog. This is going to be a dedicated reading vlog for Argyle's Residence by Ruby Dixon. <laughs> This is her new book in the Ice Planet Clones series. So it's a spinoff series from Ice Planet Barbarians and Ice Home. So I recommend probably reading this book after you read those two series, but I think you could read this as a standalone. Um, there's like a foreword part of this book that talks about um, what you should technically know before this point. I've already read this book, but I'm coming to you now to film an intro for this vlog because I didn't film one before I started reading because I was just so excited to read it. Um, but if you don't know about Arajal, he is one of the aliens that is a part of the Ice Home Camp, so a part of the IPB spin-off series, the main spin-off series, Ice Home. And he is a part of the Tall Horn Clan, which are um, the Sukui aliens with really tall horns. <laughs> if you don't know about IPB, they are blue aliens that live on this planet called Not Hoth, and human women have been illegally abducted from Earth and have crash landed on this ice planet, and they are finding their fated mates with these aliens. Ice Home is a spinoff of that where there's another human camp with different aliens that live on a beach, and Arjal is one of those men, and he was the last Sukui male in Ice Home not to have a mate at the end of that series. And so this is finally his book at the start of a new series. Um, you got a snippet of what was going to happen with him and his love story at the end of Floor's fiasco. Um, so I've been looking forward to this book ever since reading that chapter. So Arjal has been waiting for his fated mate for quite a long time. You read in Floor's fiasco that he had like some feelings for Floor, like he thought that they would be fated mates, but he never went and pursued her because he's always been waiting for resonance. And he felt kind of like lame at points for doing that. He's like, I could be doing other things with these women, but I don't know why, I just can't. He just felt in his bones that he needed to wait for his fated mate to do anything. And that happens when he ends up across a woman he does not know on this ice planet when everyone on this planet basically knows each other. And so he's very shocked when he finds a human woman he's never met before in a cave named Rosalind. And that is where I'm going to leave you with. And um, yeah, the next few clips are going to be me reading the book in real time. There are going to be spoilers in this vlog, by the way. So just forewarning you, if you've not read this book, um, there's going to be spoilers because I just wanted to gush about this book so much. So don't pay attention to the mess behind you. <laughs> it's Saturday and the weekend is like my cleaning time and it's Saturday morning. So have I had time to clean yet? No. But um, have I had time to read a book? Yes. <laughs> I have started Arjal's Resonance by Ruby Dixon, and I thought I'd chat with you while I make my classic egg tacos. Um, whenever I am cooking for my channel, it's normally because I'm making egg tacos. They are my tried and true when it comes to like breakfast I can sit down and eat because I'm obsessed with them. For years, this has been the meal that I would eat every single day. But when you get a job, like I don't have time in the morning to make this every morning. So I save these for the weekend now. Um, because normally in the morning I just eat some yogurt or something. So um, I'm going to scramble three eggs, make my breakfast, and talk to you what I think about Arjal's resonance so far. Um, I am around on page 50, and this book is I think like 335 pages around that, around that number. And I'm at the point right now where the couple has finally met. <laughs> um, also, by the way, if you haven't read any other Ruby books, I think you can start with this book because for the first time ever, Ruby has put a what has been before, like forward of the book to like kind of tell readers like, this is what you should know about this world, this planet, what has happened in the other series that are connected to this one um, before this point, which is new because normally for all of my Ruby Dixon videos, I've had to say like, oh just by the way this one's a spinoff of this one and you have to read this series to read this series because there's not really a good i don't know like bridge to explain the worlds and so i really like how 
she put that at the beginning. So if you want to start a new series by Ruby, you could technically start with this one because I think she does a good job at explaining what's happened so far in the other two connected series before you start this one. I wanted to mention the trigger warnings Ruby puts at the beginning of the book in case you wanted to know before the video gets started. But if you haven't read this book yet and you want to know the trigger warnings, um, she put food contamination, captivity, kidnapping, harassment, pregnancy, uh, medical trauma, reference to forced resonance, forced cooey acquirement, cloning, and laboratory trauma. And I don't want to spoil Floor's fiasco, but you get a hint at the end of Floor's fiasco as to what happens in the beginning of this book. Our jaw in here is one of the last males on the entire planet, alien planet, to not have resonance, to not have a mate. And he is kind of glum about it until one day um, at the beginning of this book, he gets kidnapped by some aliens we did not know were on this planet. And he meets his fated mate, Rosalind. The beginning chapter of this book is in Rosalind's perspective. And she is basically terrified. She wakes up in a coffin, she thinks. And when she opens the coffin, it's just snow. And all she has on is a very sheer thin nightgown. And she is like, if I don't move, I will freeze to death. And there's all these other like coffins around her filled with other people. She's like, what do I do? Why are all these coffins here? What is going on? She finds some moss around her, decides to take off her nightgown, cut her nightgown into strips to make shoes for herself because she doesn't have shoes puts the moss inside the shoes and walks to try and find some shelter. And when she finally finds that shelter, she gets kidnapped by someone. I'm only 50 pages in. It's not even 20% of the way through the book yet. And Arjal and Rosalind have finally met each other. They were both forced into this cell. I don't know who's keeping them. I have an inkling on who's keeping them. Um, so by the way, there are gonna be like spoilers for this um, book, obviously. Right now, I'm at a point where Rosalind and Arjal have met and Rosalind has met her captors. And it seems like they are all put together of the other clans that we've met from the Ice Home series. So you have like Shadow Cat, Strong Arm, and um, Tallhorn clans. And so I think they're like the ancestors, like the people who had all of those features. So they had the beard, they had the tall horns, and they had four arms. Um, and so she's describing to our jaw, like, who captured her, and he's like, that's impossible. Those are what our ancestors looked like. Like, I've met everyone on this planet. Like, that's not possible. So I think by the end of this chapter, there's, like, a figure coming into the, the frame, and I think he's about to meet said being. I don't know what or who he is. I think this series is titled Ice Planet Clones, so I have an inkling that Rosalind is probably a clone, or these like other aliens like the ancestor aliens are clones i have no clue um but if you've read other ruby books then you would know that clones are kind of like a thing going on in her world right now when it comes to her um corsair series the wizard of our series like clones are popping up everywhere you get a little bit of a backstory with rosalind i actually think she is a clone because based off of ruby's other books that we've read about clones clones have like gaps in their memory a lot um since they're cloned from like the original being their clones have certain parts of their brain instead of the whole brain um because unfortunately based off of what we learned in ruby's books like clones are put together by taking literally destroying the host the original person and like grabbing and putting pieces together um to make a new one like little like they'll take like a little tiny chunk of brain and make that into a whole person like crazy and so a lot of these clones have gaps in their memory and if they meet another clone that's cloned from the same person they have different memories than them if that makes sense that's why i really recommend like reading all of ruby's books because it just makes more sense you know so like i probably i now know that rosalind is a clone because like i just remembered oh those clones had gaps in their memory too so and also ruby's books are just amazing so you gotta read all of them <laughs> something we've learned about rosalind from her past life what she does remember is that she was a librarian on earth and she wrote fan fiction which is so cool to me i love how ruby how ruby put that in there and i love the scene where they first meet and arjo <laughs> he's like oh my gosh you're my mate can i pet you like he's wanting to do all these things for her and she's like who are you? You're creeping me out. And he's like, 
I'm scaring you. Oh my gosh, no, I'll stop. Let me back up. Like, I'm so sorry. Like, how can I make you more comfortable? And she's just like, is he a creep or not? Because like, he's not actually doing anything to me. Like, <laughs> it was so funny. These eggs are just about done. So I'm gonna turn it off and then prepare my tortillas. So I use two different tortillas because one's my favorite and I wanna savor it. So um, I love these almond tortillas, obsessed with them. They are so delicious and they're huge. Like they're the size of a flour tortilla. I can't eat flour tortillas if you don't know, I have celiac disease. And so these are amazing, they're huge. I love them because corn tortillas are like <laughs> this big. So I get one almond flour tortilla and then I get one corn tortilla because almond flour tortillas are expensive. So I try to make them last for as long as possible. So that's why I use two different tortillas. I make two tacos from two different tortillas. And so this is the tiny one, the corn one, look at the difference. <laughs> and I also learned whenever I, uh, I went to, I think whenever I went to Florida for like Disney World and like 2021, um, I learned that tortillas are not like common like anywhere else because my go-to breakfast is an egg taco. And so I went to Walmart to go get some tortillas like I normally do here in Texas. And y'all don't have tortillas. Like it was all bread. I only found one, one brand of corn tortillas and they were so crappy. <laughs> so if you want corn tortillas, you have to come to Texas, okay? Just putting that out there. I'm gonna put them on top of each other like this and pop them in the microwave for 30 seconds. It's 30 seconds later, they're all heated up. I'm gonna put them off to the side and then put the eggs on the dishes, obviously. So I have already highlighted two things, so I thought I would share. Um, one of them is when uh, they first meet, she asks him, why am I here? Why are you here? And he responds by saying, you're here because you are mine. Like, yes. And then they're talking. And this is after the point where Arjal like backs off from being very like affectionate right from the get go. And she's a little scared. And so he's being nice and like offering her warmth because she doesn't have a cooey. I forgot to mention that. She doesn't have a cooey. And so she's freezing her butt off. <laughs> so he really wants to give her comfort. She needs warmth. And so he's like, you can share warmth with me. I have a cooey. I can keep you warm. And she's like, okay, but no funny business. And he's like, of course not. I would never touch you without your consent. So she asks him, why are you being so nice to me? And he says, because we are in this together. To himself, he says, because you are mine and I've waited for you forever. Like, come on. I love our show. Okay, I'm going to put the rest of my taco together. All I do is add some salt and some cheese and I'm gonna eat it. So I'm gonna go do that. And after that, I'm going to continue reading this book. I'm on chapter 17. So 41% of the way through this book, I am obsessed. <laughs> this is unlike any Ruby book I've ever read. There are so many new things going on in here. I feel like a lot of the time when you read a Ruby book, you kind of know what you're gonna be expecting in certain aspects. You know what the culture is going to be like in that series. You know what the creatures are going to be like. The setting. Like that's what's typical for Rubyverse books. I feel like. Like it's kind of expected. Certain aspects are expected. And that's one of the things I just love about her books. Is because I love her world and what she's created. And so the things that have happened so far have been so cool. <laughs> so it turns out right now our couple is in like an underground tunnel system of sorts. It's kind of like, have you watched like The Host by Stephanie Meyer and they all live underground in those caverns? It's like that. That's what I'm picturing in my brain. One of the tribesmen, his name is Setnef. Setnef. <laughs> um, he's the one who's bringing them food and everything and their people think that Rosalind is cursed that she has a sickness that's gonna have her like die she's gonna die and they think that the sickness is contagious but the two of them get to know one another Rosalind and um, Arjal they're like leaning on each other in this time of need and then there's also this gross dude like an outcast oop, an outcast from the tribe his name is Kinfar Kinfar is like an outcast and he's like leering at her and like wanting her like He's gross. He did some not good things to their food. <laughs> like, disgusting. But then Set Neff is like, I've heard from my chief 
and he wants to kill you basically. So I'm gonna help you escape because I think that's wrong. This guy and his brother are leading Arjal and um, Rosalind through these tunnels to safety. They're, te they're technically going to an oracle. I don't know who or what that is, um, but there's a language barrier because Arjal and Rosalind understand each other because they have uh, like language chips. But the two like new brothers don't understand them. They can understand what they're saying, but they can't understand what they're saying. <laughs> if that makes sense. Rosalind this whole time is like absolutely frozen. Um, like she has like, this little strip of clothing that she's wearing. Arjal has to take off his loincloth to basically give to her to sleep in. So he has no clothes on this entire time. <laughs> Um, and they do some things while they're in their jail cells, so that was nice. <laughs> that was after this dude saves them and trying to help them escape. And so right now they're leading them through these tunnels and um, as I said before, like it's freezing for her. Their underground tunnels, there's like a, a river of lava, so I'm assuming they're living under like one of the big mountains that we know about on the world. And it's actually a volcano. Arjal's really worried about Rosalind also because she doesn't have a cooey. And these men don't understand him when they're like, your mate is dying, okay? Just accept it, she's gonna die, she's sick. And he's like, you don't get it. I need to find her a cooey so she doesn't die. And they have no idea what he's talking about. Like, it's gibberish basically to them. And so right now, I just finished the chapter where he kills this like giant snake creature, bird snake creature in these tunnels and takes the cooey out of his heart and puts it into Rosalind and then she blacks out. <laughs> Things are going, I am loving this. Like, it's been such an entertaining read. I can't get enough of it. Okay, I'm on chapter 24 of this book and I'm still enjoying it. <laughs> That's all I, like all I have to say. I'm now 60% of the way through. Right now, Rosalind, Arjal and now Tia. Tia has been rescued by them. And then her, I think, soon to be mate, who's the son to the main bad chief dude. I don't know. And then three people from the Under the Mountain aliens, I don't know, are now trying to go to the ice home camp. Arjal just told Rosalind though, like what resonance like actually means. And like resonance means that you make the best offspring basically, and that's why resonance happens. And she's like catastrophizing that situation so badly right now. She's like, okay, so then you don't like me for me. You like me because the symbiote is telling you to put a baby in me. And she's like not having it. And she's also just lost and confused because she can't remember things because she's a clone, but she doesn't know she's a clone yet. But I know she's a clone, I know it. And then I'm also wondering about all those other people who were dropped off with her, she said when she woke up, there was a bunch of other like coffins around. I'm like, where are those people? Because the, the under the mountain volcano people only know of Rosalind and Tia as the two humans. Like they weren't talking about any other humans. So I don't think they have them. And I'm also just curious about the ancestry and how this under the mountain people came to be there. Did they come? I think they came in the same spaceship as the main Sakui people, but I think this was an escape pod. And there was the big ship that the Sakui tribes are from. And then there's the escape pod that the under the mountain people are from. It's a little bit confusing, but I'm not like not liking it. I just want to know more. And then I'm curious how other pairings are gonna go. Cause like, what's gonna happen? We, I need to know who those other people were that crashed with Rosalind. Like, who are they? Where are they? Where'd they go? I'm hoping that they're at the Ice Home Beach. Like, that would be ideal. <laughs> Not with some other group of people we don't know about. But they're about to go to the beach, I assume. Right now, Rosalind and Tia are, like, being buddy-buddy while walking to the camp. And Rosalind's kind of avoiding Arjal because of what she found out about Resonance. And so he's not very happy. Um, And he's just confused. He's like... His, he just knows that like all of his life, like your cooey picks for you. Like that means that you're in love with that person. Like that is your soulmate. And he sees it in like no other way. He's been waiting all of his life for his mate. He hasn't been with any other woman because he's waited for her. I think we're gonna be getting to the beach in this chapter, to the ice home beach. So I'm really excited. And I can't wait to see all my other lovely characters. Where are they gonna go to Krokotoan? I think it's probably the ice home beach because that's where Arjal's originally from. Not the island, they can't go to the island, the island is blown up. But 
Um, like the eyes home beach is technically his home and he says, he says that he's going to take Rosalind to his home. So, um, and she's not very happy about with him too, because he said that he would take her back to earth and he's not going to do that. <laughs> like he can't. Hi everyone. I have finished our Jaws residence by Ruby Dixon and I loved it. <laughs> I have nothing else to say really other than I loved it. Like it was awesome. I really loved these two characters. I loved Rosalind. I love Arjal and I love them together and how sweet and cute they were. Like I loved it. There were moments of this book that I was a little confused by because things weren't delved into more. There were new characters, new species of alien, new clones. Like it was a lot. But in the author's note, you read like Ruby's like, you're supposed to be left questioning because I will delve more into it and the later books in the series, which makes sense. I anticipated that. Like she can't go all in on a new series and know everything about it right from book one. Um, so I look forward to reading the other books in the series whenever they come out. I did not hate Tia in this book, so that's kind of a plus. <laughs> and even the author's note, I think Ruby was like, I found myself hating Tia less and less while I was writing this. I'm actually kind of looking forward to her book whenever it comes out and with her resonance mate, I can't even pronounce his name. Like these names are getting harder and harder to pronounce. Rosalind in here is dealing a lot with figuring out that she is a clone. Like what does that mean for her? Is she a real person? She's having these night terrors. And I just really felt for her. Like she was dealing with a lot. Like she's learning like this is not like the original Rosalind, um, but Arjal's telling her like, you are a real person. You're a person, you're a being. You are not just a skin of a being. You are entirely a person. Like I would not be resonating to you. You would not be my faded mate. If you were not real, like you're real, you're mine. I love you. Like I love him. He is so sweet. I love a good protective man. Like Arjal is one of the most protective men ever. I love him. And I don't know what else to say other than I loved this book. I loved it. I can't wait to get into more of the books whenever they come out. I'm going to be vlogging about each book, obviously. I can't wait to learn more about just like what Ruby has in store for this world and what all the different pairings are. I kind of wish that we knew all of the new human women and more and the other alien clones that were like dumped with them um on this planet i wish we knew more about them like even their names um like i didn't know any of the new human women names um like in the actual book i had to go to like the character pages that are always at the end of ruby's books um especially the ipb books where it like lists all the character names and everything and their mates and stuff and so i didn't know any of the new human women until i read that part of the book which is the part i normally skip over because i'm very familiar with Ruby's characters. Um, but because this was a new series, I wanted to see if those names were mentioned and they are. So um, I wish we just got that more in the book. But Ruby wrote in her author's note, like there are just some things she can't delve into in this new world and this new like situation because these books are in first person. Like Rosalind probably doesn't talk about the other human women because she is a big introvert and is kind of in a precarious situation with her emotions as though she doesn't want to meet all the clones. And so it makes sense why we don't know them because we have not been introduced to them through Rosalind's point of view. And Arjal doesn't really care about these human women. Like Rosalind is his woman. Like he doesn't want to meet all these other women. <laughs> um, so it makes sense why we didn't get introduced to them. Like it makes sense. Like everything's in first person, a point of view. The way these two were together with exploring their resonance, I thought was beautiful. Like I love those scenes and just like Arjal, like learning about Rosalind and Rosalind learning about Arjal. Like A plus, A plus 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 for me. <laughs> I think I'm going to leave it there. I've gushed about this book quite a lot. Um, let me know what you thought about this book in the comment section down below because I would love to know. Let me know any of your theories and what you thought of this book. Um, and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any purple emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.